and this thing took quite a uh it was not a jump it was not a jump hyundai <laughs> we it didn't was not jump a jump it. we did not jump the hyundai kona Welcome to South Carolina. I'm with my friend Hanson from Shifting Lanes, and we are driving the brand new 2024 Hyundai Kona. Yes, I'm sorry, Megan couldn't make it on this trip. Someone has to hold down the Ford at home. But anyway, we're gonna take you through this really great small crossover that replaces the fun and cheerful Hyundai Kona with a more grown up and serious and mature Hyundai Kona. And that might not be a bad thing. So we're in a very buggy South Carolina, obviously by a marsh, not always the ideal place to film for the styling in terms of bugs, but it looks really nice for the car. And what you'll notice right away about this new Hyundai Kona is that styling. It's the more mature styling. This thing looks really good. It's a nice evolution of what the Hyundai Kona was before, which was sort of a cheap and cheerful and fun kind of tall hatchback. Now it's taken on more of like crossover proportions. And I think this one, this is the end line. This one looks pretty fantastic. You know I love a good light bar, and this one has both a light bar in the front and the rear, which, you know, always appreciated, as well as the end line accents trim and spoiler. So I'm digging it. I like the 19-inch wheels. I think Hyundai did a really good job evolving the Kona styling into kind of a more mature, you know, segment without losing the fun that made the original Kona so lovable. Styling, it, like it's funny because the Crosstrek and Subaru people don't get offended, but I feel like Subaru's kind of design philosophy is like charming dorkiness. And it's yeah. like the Kona is like, yeah, but what if we don't make it dorky? What if we make <laughs> it kind of cool and sleek and futuristic looking, but still have some of that functionality and that ruggedness? Um, yeah. I, I think it works here. It works here. It, it, what do you think about this? It works here better to me than it does on the Mazda CX-30 where you have a more elegant exterior and that sort of plastic feels mm. kind of like an afterthought. Yeah. This feels a little more cohesive. I'd have to compare the two right next to each other because the last time I drove the CX-30, I compared it to the CX-3 or, uh, yeah. yeah. And it's like the, the CX-30 or the CX-50 looks very butch, you know, like. The CX-50 yeah. I like, but yeah. I feel like the CX-30, it looks kind of like it's an elegant car with plastic. Yeah, yeah, This yeah. looks, for some reason, it just feels like it works a little better. The exterior yeah. design of this, it just feels like a what? little bit more like one kind of thought. Yeah, well, you know, uh, the Hyundai, like I mentioned before, they, they like take a lot of risks in yeah. the design. And if you look at the side of it, you know, this has like this really nice Z profile to it, or yeah. that Z character line. So I think it's because they've, introduced like those parametric surfaces <laughs> you know that's one of the pr buzzwords here and around the back you see the same kind of signatures that you see in the front it's got the horizon seamless yeah. led you know again part of that bingo card um but that, that light bar, light bar <laughs> that should just yeah. be like Basically any, light any bar. vehicle that has a light bar now which i will i will say and yeah. i'm on record for saying this i'm a sucker for a light bar i think yeah. so many light bars look cool i know it's gonna get played out but it's like hyundai thought you know it will get played out so let's just do a nice thin little accent strip <laughs> just a little yeah. accent to make it look cool comment down below if you're watching this video in yeah. 2030 and you're like i'm so sick of light bars <laughs> like light bars have been over for years now so hey all you 2030 people hey how's it going sorry we were wrong or we were yeah. right and uh, is the world over yet <laughs> is, 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 are question. we still here yeah. like is youtube still a thing yeah <laughs> now obviously around back you see that revised styling you see that spoiler but here's the thing you've got 25 
cubic feet of cargo space. 25 cubic feet of cargo space in a vehicle in this class is pretty good. And I think that puts the Hyundai Kona near the top of the segment. The Toyota Corolla Cross in its regular form has like 26, but now the Kona has 25.5, which puts it slightly ahead of the Honda HRV. And it puts it pretty far ahead of things like the Subaru Crosstrek and you know other things like the CX-30. Like the CX-30 is just too small. So I like that Hyundai was able to stretch the vehicle, stretch the wheel blade base, wheel blaze, wheel base, and still give it 25.5 cubic feet of cargo space, making it more useful than a lot of small SUVs crossovers. One of the things you're probably wondering is what powers the Hyundai Kona? Well, the base Hyundai Kona in this new version, it's kind of just a carryover of the two liter four cylinder. And it's like 150-ish horsepower, nothing spectacular. Who cares? This one is the turbo four cylinder. It's a 1.6 liter turbo, and it's making 190 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. Now that is slightly less than the previous Hyundai Kona, but it's not that big of a deal. The thing that I like best about this is it's running through an eight speed automatic transmission because the dual clutch in the regular Hyundai Kona, not the end, but the regular Hyundai Kona was not my favorite, okay? You can go check out, I'll link it in the description below. One of my videos where I was actually having some transmission issues issues with my tester. Never a good thing, you know, when it's a test vehicle. This one going to the eight-speed automatic, I think is a much better choice. It's paired well with the vehicle, but here's the thing. Let's go for a brief drive with me and Hansen from Shifting Lanes, where we talk a little bit more about the Hyundai Kona, but also about how the Hyundai Kona is handling on our extensive tour of South Carolina. So we're here in, uh, where are we, Charleston, South yes, Carolina? Yes, we are outside of Charleston, South Carolina. Okay and we're here in the 2024 Hyundai Kona. So we're doing a test drive basically. So this is our first drive impressions and haven't driven this before aside from the 30 minute driving session. So we've got some impressions yeah. and we've got, I think they did a lot of work with this Hyundai yeah. Kona. It's redesigned inside and out. It's on the K3 platform now. And uh, I think this drives pretty nicely. Yeah, and it feels very different from the previous gen Hyundai Kona, but it still feels like a Hyundai Kona. It yeah. looks like a Hyundai Kona, it feels like a Hyundai Kona. So it's definitely an evolution of the Hyundai Kona. So if you were a fan of the Hyundai Kona, you're not gonna be disappointed that this Kona is a more refined, mature Hyundai yeah. Kona. And I think that's one of their talking points is like, this car is all about having a bigger and more refined Kona. It's got more cargo space, it's stretched out a little bit more, and it's also got some premium tech. So let's go for a drive and talk about some of the driving experience, all the new features, and uh, let's go to our, our next stop. Yeah, yeah, so, we're, we're on a, a series of waypoints to our yeah. destination. But on the topic of size, um, I'm six foot six. If you ever watch my channel, I say it all the time and my friends tease me for it. But as someone who is six foot six, I very much appreciate the fact that this is a roomier <laughs> Hyundai Kona. You don't notice it as much from the driver's seat where you can adjust it to your liking, but you definitely notice it in rear passenger seat space. And the other nice thing is that this thing has over 25 feet of cargo space. Yeah. Uh, 25 cubic feet, which is a really uh, big step up, which the last one was what, 19 cubic it's, feet or it's, something? It's a small car. Yeah. And so with this one, it has gotten bigger. You know, there's a little bit less power, which is strange, but the way they built this car is they wanted to go a little bit bigger. They first approached the platform by putting, by having the EV car in mind, which is, that's kind of a fresh take because yeah. in the past, you know, EVs are a relatively new thing. So they've always tried to kind of shoehorn batteries into existing platforms or just build platforms specific just for EVs. So this is kind of like a fresh approach to it where it's like, okay, we want to build it as an EV, but also have all of these other drivetrains. So for example, this one has a two liter engine and also the 1.6 liter turbo four, which is what we have right now. Yeah. And because they've stretched everything out, you know, the wheelbase is like two 0.4 inches longer, which means that passenger space in the second row is a lot roomier and the cargo space is, like you said, 25 point something cubic inches, which is, you know, for a Kona, 
I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely good in the segment, like where, you know, sort of the low 20s is kind of normal, and the Corolla Cross, I think, in its standard engine has 26, 26 and change, so it's like tops, and now the Kona is right up there with the best in class, um, both in- Half a mile, turn left onto US 17 alternate south. This US is important. <laughs> we don't want to miss our turn, because yes, I've been to Charleston before, but not out here. Um, so- Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a dead end. So yeah, I think gonna... she means here. Okay, yeah, yeah, this road kind of continues yeah, okay. you're getting real-time adjustments <laughs> here on shifting lanes in yeah, Jack's Automotive yeah. as we try not to get lost in the uh, the wilds of Charleston South Carolina but the Kona one thing that is uh, noteworthy as we turn left yeah. is that the Kona's ride quality we've gone over some very interesting pavement we were in downtown Charleston right and so you got a lot of the old style cobblestones really bad pavement I mean you've got cobblestone you've got brick Thank you. Um, and you've got a lot of pretty tough pavement to navigate in any car. And this thing, being a small car, felt very refined, very comfortable. Yeah. It doesn't wallow or pogo. It absorbs the bounces. The suspension is on the softer side, for sure. Sure, yeah. Um, you know, we're two enthusiasts, but we have to remember that not <laughs> everyone wants a button-down barnstorming vehicle. Right. Some people just want a comfortable vehicle. Not everything has to be a Veloster end. Nope, you know? nope, not at all. Yeah. And uh, to that end, I think this thing is doing a great job because... Yeah. Uh, over these longer highway stretches, it's very comfortable, like yeah. very smooth. This is a very easy car to drive. It feels more refined, more mature, you know, and it's eating up all of those bumps pretty easily. And this limited, this we're riding the limited. There's four trims, the SE, SEL, N line, and the limited. For mm -hmm. this drive event, we're only driving the N line and the limited. But these cars come with 19 inch wheels, which is I mean, a couple of years ago, we were like 19 inches. That's insane. That's like so huge. You don't really need it. But, you know, with big wheels, usually you have very low profile tires and usually low profile tires means that it has a harsh ride, but not so much in this case. No. And I think it's because, you know, they, they, they built the platform pretty nicely. They, you know, increased the stiffness in the body basically so that you have uh, better control over like ride quality. Mm -hmm. So your suspension can basically do a better job because your chassis is a little bit stiffer. I mean, it's not transmitting a lot of those vibrations and yeah. stuff through the chassis. You're staying isolated from it, which in this class of vehicle is not necessarily you know that common like to have a vehicle that's absorbing this much of the road texture and giving you a comfortable ride on 19 inch wheels um you don't feel it through the steering wheel you don't feel it through the seat of your pants um right. we went over some very broken pavement um we went over that one railroad uh, expansion yeah, which was uh, a little bit worse speed. than yeah we thought yeah. it was and this thing took quite a uh it was not a jump it was not a jump hyundai <laughs> we it didn't was not jump a jump no. we did not jump the hyundai kona but it was a lot more extreme than we thought. And this thing not only cushioned us from it, but like the structure felt very stiff. And yeah. that's impressive for a small kind of affordable vehicle. Yeah, and usually like ride quality, you know, you have to think about the sound, the yeah. noise, vibration and harshness. And with this car, they've added a couple of more sound insulation stuff. So if you look at the tires, they have a sound insulation pad along the belt to kind of absorb some of that noise because a lot of noise sometimes from driving comes from the tires, it comes from the wind. So they also added some foam insulation under the floor to help absorb that. And if you look at the exterior design, I think this is where we could go next, but the coefficient of drag is like 0.3. It mm -hmm. looks buttery smooth from the outside. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, it, it looks, looks cool. it looks cool. And you know, they, They've completely redesigned this thing. It has more of a kind of like an EV face, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It has like tiny looking grills. And it's kind of refreshing to see a car that doesn't have like a big catfish looking yeah. grill, right? Well, I was just about to say that because, uh, and and you can, you can go to my channel and see, I have gone on record numerous times saying, I love some of Hyundai's design direction and I love most of Kia's, but some of Hyundai's sort of recent designs, I was not a fan of. And I was very critical, um, <laughs> the Elantra mainly. Uh, I really couldn't stand the way that looked. 
and this looks really great. Where, where they're kind of evolving their design language, that thin LED strip across the front the and the rear. The horizon uh, LEDs. Yeah, we're gonna go right up here, I think, the next right. slide. Okay. But yeah, it, it looks like a handsome and futuristic evolution of maybe slightly too avant-garde styling in the previous sort of gens. Um, and I really like what they're doing with this. Like the Kona I always thought was kind of fun. It was kind of like, it didn't take itself too seriously, kind of tongue in cheek sort of vehicle. Yeah. This looks like a Kona, but just more refined and more upscale. And I think that's absolutely what Hyundai is going for here. Yeah, they, uh, and you know, um, Hyundai takes big risks when it mm -hmm. comes to yeah. design. They're not and, afraid to. <laughs> <laughs> and and this one looks. Uh, am I turning right here? No, next no, one. Next one. Okay. And I thought that they were gonna go with like the Hyundai Tucson or the mm -hmm. Santa Cruz look, you know, with the triangles, mm -hmm. with the hidden lights and everything. But this almost seems like it has its own identity. So I'm curious if you know they're gonna continue what with what they did with the Tucson or the Santa Cruz, or maybe this is like the new design language direction for Hun the Hyundai brand. Yeah, yeah well, the new Elantra yeah. kind of looks like this when they refreshed the that's front right, of the Elantra. Right. Yeah. And now the Elantra, this is sort of kind of evolving into that similar look. And, and I really like that. If they're gonna kind of go in this direction of like, I don't even know, I'm not an art major, but like postmodern futurism or whatever, you know, whatever it is, this sort Brutalism? of- Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. I think it's a combination, if we, if we put it in a serious term, I would say it's a combination of like, where EVs have felt the need to be overly futuristic, and then like you were saying, uh, yeah. traditional models that were adapted into EVs. To me, this feels like Hyundai is sort of going, why don't we meld those two things together? Why don't we look at this from a ground up and say, can we make it a ground up EV? Can we also make it a combustion, possibly a hybrid? We were sort of told that the N should be returning. Yeah. That is not officially confirmed, but it was not denied. And yeah. so that means that this platform could be spawning a, a high performance variant as well, which is really exciting yeah. all from one model. I, I'm, I'm gonna be looking forward to that day. They did say TBD, so <laughs> I mean like- They didn't say no. <laughs> yeah, they didn't say no. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the first generation Kona N was the That's craziest. Awesome subcompact crossover I've ever driven. Yeah, and, it's uh, a bonkers little car. Yeah. It's just bonkers. That's my that's my word I always use for it. It's bonkers. It doesn't make any sense, but it is a load of fun. Such a fun car. <laughs> the interior of the new Hyundai Kona is one of the areas where it's made the biggest improvement. Forgive all of the flying gnats that are surrounding me. This is what you get when you come to the coast. But the interior has really grown up. You get these giant like 12 inch digital gauge, gauge cluster and infotainment screen in the limited trim you get like heated and cooled seats you get surround view cameras you get surrounding parking systems this is an end line so you get heated seats in a sunroof you get some of those nice things you don't quite get as much as in the limited but when you sit here in the hyundai kona it is obvious that hyundai is doing what hyundai does best packing a ton of value and features into this thing for the price point this thing tops out tops out at 31 and change okay this model here is by 28.29 you are getting a lot for your money, and, th and that undercuts the Subaru Crosstrack. It matches the very best versions of the HRV. It undercuts the Mazda CX-30. Like you're packing so many choice options and amenities into a small SUV, and you're keeping the price point down. That is going to appeal to a lot of people. Not to mention, this one comes with standard all-wheel drive and over eight inches of ground clearance. So like. This thing has it all, and you're getting it for 31, like five. Well, this one's cheaper. It like feels, it feels very airy. Like yeah. that's very impressive. I just recently had the Corolla Cross Hybrid, which has a decent amount of passenger space, and and this feels more spacious. If you look at the volume, the volume is not that different. Um, the the uh, Kona beats some of its rivals, and we're talking by a few inches here or there. Definitely feels spacious. But compared to the Corolla Cross Hybrid, especially up here in the front, it just kind of feels a little bit more spacious. Yeah, and I think it's because, you know, th they do some tricks with, and a lot of car companies do this now, where they, they try to use horizontal lines to mm -hmm. kind of like trick your eyes into thinking things are wider than they appear. And you see a lot of 
horizontal lines, not a lot of delineation, like vertical, mm -hmm. you know, like here's where the driver is, here's the center console, here's the passenger uh, location. Uh, the big change here, uh, you know, it, it, it looks wider, uh, but the two 12.3 inch screens, I mean, mm -hmm. this thing looks awesome. We've got the touch screen over on the right hand side. Let me just pull in and park here, focus on that first. Um, and then on the left hand side here, we have the um, digital instrument cluster, bunch of sensors binging and, and surround view cameras and, and uh, the parking cameras. sensors. Yeah. Which is a nice feature. The, the big change here too is that the transmission is now shift by wire and it has been relocated to the steering column. Before it was like over here and that's, you know, it, it adds to the large aspect of the car, right? Yeah. It's like the very open Freeze floor up, concept yeah, up aspect to here. it. And uh, yeah, steer by wire. The uh, We were talking about the drive and reverse and how drive used to be all the yeah. way in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now driving is you have to twist this forward to go forward and back to go reverse. Which and my wife sense. likes that. Yeah. She insists that you should turn something to go forward to go forward. And she's <laughs> a big fan of the Ionic 5 transmission selector. And this is yeah. very much like the Ionic 5 transmission selector. Yeah. And um, lots of technology in yeah. here, right? Um, Way more than you normally get in this class of yeah. vehicle. I mean, that's Hyundai does a great job of just packing vehicles. I mean, we've got heated and cooled seats, heated steering right. wheel. We've got our sunroof. We've got a ton of charge ports and wireless charging. Right. right. This thing is loaded with technology, and uh, this limited is what, 31 and change? 31,650. That's a great That's price. That's crazy. But yeah, um, wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto for now, but there is a big change for, at least for this Hyundai Kona, they're gonna do an over the air update to provide wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto sometime in 2024. Like historically speaking, you could get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto in like some of the lower end trims. Right, the lower trims. But once you put navigation on there, then you lose that wireless aspect. Why is that? I think it's got something to do with like data rights yeah, and everything. Yeah, it was some of data, but it yeah. was counterintuitive and a lot of customers and people that complain on the internet like us were like, that doesn't make sense. You're paying more money and you're getting a less convenient feature. Right. And Hyundai listened. And yeah. now they're gonna push out a wireless update that is supposedly, I think, going forward on future Hyundai models. Not so. retroactively, yeah. but it's going right. forward. So that's yeah. appreciated. Now, I know you guys come here and you always want to know, at six foot six, can I fit in the back seat of a vehicle? And in this small crossover in the new Hyundai Kona, I have plenty of space. Now, here's the thing. This seat is not set for me. I'm with Hanson from Shifting Lanes. This is set for him, and he's about 5'8", which is about the same height as Megan. So that's approximately where the seat would be for her. But I can fit behind myself. The seat is carved out. Hyundai actually created a seat with like a smaller, stiffer frame and different padding to carve out more interior room. So not only did they stretch the wheelbase of the Hyundai Kona, they sculpted the seat specifically to give you more rear seat legroom. It's like the top of the class now. It's like up there with the best in the class. So this is an incredibly spacious and airy cabin. Something that we noted in the driving portion is like how spacious the cabin feels, but also like the visibility. You get really good visibility and you don't feel sitting back here in the Hyundai Kona. I've got plenty of headroom. I've got knee room. This is a ridiculous amount of space in a small crossover for someone who's six foot six. All right, so should you buy a 2024 Hyundai Kona, especially as it compares to the other vehicles in its class? Well, first of all, I think you absolutely should give the Hyundai Kona a look. This is a fantastic small SUV, not to mention that it starts at like 24,000. So you get like the SE, then you go to SEL. There's an SEL like convenience package or something that gives you a lot of good options and sort of that mid-level and it comes in at like 26, 27. You can go up to the end line or you can just max it out at 31. And for 31 and change, this is a lot of value. And I have very few complaints about the Hyundai Kona. One of the only complaints, one of the only ones is that it gets 
mediocre gas mileage. The fuel economy is not super good, okay? We're averaging somewhere around 26 miles per gallon on this extensive loop of Charleston, South Carolina, and that's only average. I was in the Corolla Cross Hybrid a few weeks ago, go check out that review, and we were easily getting over 40 miles to the gallon. So if fuel economy is a concern for you, the Hyundai Kona might not be the move. However, in terms of features per dollar and the amount that you're getting for your money, there are very few, if any, small SUVs in this class that can even come close to the Kona. For someone like Halley, who's gonna be of driving age relatively soon, sooner than I would like, this is something that I would absolutely consider. Um, if you look at the limited trim, the safety feature set in this thing is extensive. You get a ton of safety features in a vehicle that costs 31 grand. So that's something you should absolutely consider if you have a new driver or an upcoming driver like we do. I'll say this to wrap up. I like the way the Hyundai Kona drives. It's more mainstream, it's softer and more comfortable. I'm more of an enthusiast, but I think more of you will enjoy it. I think the fuel economy is just okay. But in terms of daily livability and value per dollar, this is tough to beat. And if those are your primary concerns, the Hyundai Kona might be the best vehicle in the class for you. Guys, if you like this video, please consider subscribing and liking it and sticking around. Also, please go check out Hanson's channel, Shifting Lanes, to see some of the most detailed and in-depth reviews. He forgets more about his test vehicles than I remember about mine. So you get all the information from his channel that I don't provide you. You know, I'm, I'm more here for like getting beaten up by Megan, you know, in a family kind of setting. So go check out his channel. I'll link to it below. Thanks so much for being here. And of course, as always, I'll see you in the next review. Yeah. Also, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to this exactly. guy, right? This subscribe channel's great. to this guy too. Yeah, me too. But yeah. I mean, it's his channel too. Yeah. But subscribe I mean, to me first. Yeah, then subscribe <laughs> yeah. to me. Yeah. But anyway, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.